everyone welcome to my channel called the blue boutique if you guys are new here my name is Zoa in today's video we are not doing anything blurry but today we are doing sewing tutorial so I have a request from Evelyn and she wanted to see how I sold this bloomer that I've been sharing lately on my lives um, you know it's been taking me forever to try to list this on Etsy because I have to get like the chart measurement out trying to figure out the chart measurement but anyways today um, we're just gonna be mainly focusing on sewing this bloomer here and this um, like sash belt that go around this bloomer like that and I have a print right here so you need like cotton fabric whatever fabric choice you use this is like a woven um, pattern so you probably want like a fabric that does not stretch so I'm using this one this one's from Hobby Lobby um, I have a sunflower design so I'm going to do this sample with the sunflower and and border the top with the sunflower design that I have so you need to cut out your pattern so the the front only the pattern is supposed to be only half but I decided to make it like a full and so I don't have to mirror it I just put on my um, fabric like that so you need your pattern and this pattern I will link it down in the description if you guys want to get the pattern and make this yourself and then you need Thing binding, you guys can make your own thing binding, but I just find it easier just to bite the pack. I mostly just use black or white, so maybe pink. So, yeah, you can get this from um, Hobby Lobby, but I think on Amazon it's cheaper. I'll link also the Amazon link to get thing bindings if you guys need thing bindings. And then you guys also need 3 8 inch elastic, I'll link that down too. And then the waist, um, this is a tiny waist up here. And you only need like a half inch non row elastic. I will link this down on the description too. So everything will be linked. That's all you need to make this uh, baby bloomer. It's super easy. So, okay, so now we're just gonna get ready to lay our fabric and cut everything out. Then I'll show you guys how to sew it on my sewing machine and serger so this one I'm using my surgery my sewing machine to sew it so I don't wash my fabric just going to sew it and you know for the wash instruction since we don't pre-wash anything um, I'm not gonna like let the customer just you know wash it and hang to dry or tumble dry on like low heat so it doesn't shrink too much since this is 100% cotton. So for the back, um, you don't need to, well, it needs to be cut on mirror. So mirror means you have to fold it like, the fabric to be folded like this. So it has to be like the opposite. So this one uh, doesn't need to be cut on the fold. If you don't do this full size cutout like I did here, you have to uh, put this on the fold. The front needs to be on the fold. So you only need to cut one front and then one, one back. That's all you need. And then the built loop is just a tiny, this is for the built loop, like this sash right here. Or you can use a built. If you don't make this, uh, you don't have to make that, but you know, I, I hey you guys so right now I'm just cutting the fabric out with my pattern so the patterns need to be parallel to the selvage so the selvage is this line right here so you have to you see this is the green line right here so it has to the green line has to go parallel with the selvage edge and you don't want it to cut it like for example like this one like they both need to be parallel you see that's the green line you cannot cut it this way because this way uh, is going against the grain so they both have to go like this or like 
or back like this because this is not a directional fabric so you can cut it uh, this way or this way but not this way and for the weight i just use this washer that i got from like lowe's and home depot so yeah that's how um i'll be cutting the fabric out i'll show you guys how to sew it after this hey everyone so i didn't want to do a voice talk when i was sewing so i'm will be doing a voice over for you guys here so you guys can see here i'm just adjusting the tension because when my baby is in my room he always like like to mess up the those dial so for um, my tension i just did four four and three and a half and three and a half for the ball and my lower looper so i will be uh, surging the back two piece together because um, in the video before I show that the back piece has to be cut on the mirror image so it has uh, two sides so I have to place them right side together so pretty fabric side together so you guys can see here I just need to sew the center back line you see here so there are two piece and then place right side to right side together and just sew it um, on that curved edge of the center of the bottom. So that's all you guys will see here. Okay, so I just finished surging the bottom piece, which is the center of the bottom that go down to the crotch. So I just finished surging that. So you have to open it up to see the pretty side. And then you have to place the front, the front of the uh, bloomer piece on top of the back piece like that and match them the side and then all you have to do is just search the two side and you're almost done with this like it's just the center line of the bottom to the crotch and then the two side and then the crotch that you have to sew and the rest is just the rest would be a little bit trickier than this. This first part is easy because all you have to do is just search two sides, the bottom, and the crotch seam with your serger. So now you guys just watch me search the two sides and the crotch in the following clip. <music> After you finish sewing the two side seam and the crotch, all you have to do now is search the top edge of the bloomer because this needs to be finished since 
it's going to be left open since I'm not going to fold like a quarter inch in. Um, I'm going to serge it to finish it off because I have to fold it down toward the bottom so it will create that ruffle look on the top. And here, you know, there's two side seams. Um, I like to move all my side seam toward the back and that's what I was taught in fashion school and that's what I like too. Like, um, if you don't really care, uh, it doesn't really matter which side you want your side seam to go. I just push them all the way toward the back. That's just how I like it and that's how I was taught. So for the rest of this, you guys just be seeing me finishing this edge and this is the last thing. I guess after this, you have to do the built loop and then that's it. That's all you need the surgery for and then the rest will be on the straight stitch machine. So continue to watch for the next part. So in this next step, I need to iron down the waist bend, or it's not a bend, just the waistline, because that's how um, it's going to create the ruffle look on the top. So the pattern called for you to probably fold it down like two and a quarter. Yeah, so I think that's how much I forgot. So I was using one of my um, sample that I made before <laughs> to measure how much I need to fold it down. I think it was like two and a quarter inch down. So I'm just measuring it and just fold it down and then use an iron to create that um, fold. So it will be like um, folded like down nicely. So when you sew, it's already laying nicely flat. So you guys can sew all the way around and create that little waistband and I will explain that next step. So right here, just like fixing it, making sure it's two and a quarter inch all the way around and using my iron to um, make sure it's flat. That's all you will see in this clip for the rest of this clip. So in this next part, um, I already finished ironing all the way around and I was just measuring the sample one that I made before because I wasn't looking at the pattern. So I can't remember like how much I need to like create that little gap for the elastic to go all the way around and to create that ruffle top. So I think the pattern called for to create like a 5-8 um, channel so the one half inch uh, elastic can go through the channel so that's why i was measuring here and then in the next part you guys will see me use this um, disappearing pen to create the line because i need to make sure that i sew a straight line on the way around like i could line the bottom part with my machine because it's a quarter inch but then i cannot 
line the the top one to create that channel so I have to mark the top one and I think it was about like one and three eighth inch down from the top so that's what you guys will see me using this clear ruler and just it's not really even all the way around so I have to like do it one part at a time to make sure it's one and, and three eight all the way around so that's why I can just like draw a straight line all the way to cross you guys see me just doing it a little bit at a time and working my way around it so this this part would just be me marking my um, line to create that channel for the waist line So in this part, um, I finish drawing my line and ironing the waist line, creating that channel. Um, I'm just using my singer. This is a singer S16. I think this one is discontinued. This is not an industrial machine, but it, it acts almost like an industrial machine. Um, so I'm just preparing the machine for it. Uh, changing my thread to white because I want to use white and then just changing my bobbing out so you guys will see me just sewing the channel in this video clip so I will explain the next step after this step this step just creating the channel and sewing it all the way around the waistline so here I'm just um, getting ready to sew the the channel for the bloomers so when you sew the channel for the bloomer you will want to start from the center back you know the line that we sew at the beginning of the video when I, we were sewing at the serger you will want to start at that part and leave like a two inch opening so you can insert your elastic through it and here I'm I didn't pay attention I saw on the side I mean it's still okay because at the end I'm going to close it anyways but if you're going to add a tad it's good to start from the back and leave that two inch gap so now I finish um, doing the first round and now I'm doing the bottom part which is like I'm sewing right on top of like a quarter inch just the same um, as the serge edge that we did earlier so you guys see here I'm just sewing all the way around and I'm done with that now so the next part you have to measure the leg hole with a tape measure because you want to cut the exact amount of seam binding I'm using single face bias tape so that's what I'll do here and I'm cutting it to the exact length and then the next video you guys will see me show you guys how to sew the seam binding on so in this part of me sewing I am just um, placing the seam binding onto the leg opening so how you sew the seam binding on is you have to sew the right side of the seam binding to the right side of the garment so here I'm placing it under the crotch there's the crotch line and for you to make sure that the seam binding doesn't fry you have to fold in like 3 8 or a quarter inch end to have a clean line where and you see here I'm just pinning that down so it stay put so how the single seam binding look is it has two flap and you have to open those two flap and only match uh, one side of the flap with the edge of the um, leg edge so I hope that you guys get what I'm talking about. So you guys see me here just lining it up together and then put it into my presser feet right here. 
So I'm just gonna be matching them and sewing them slowly. So the seam binding will match up with the edge of the um, leg opening. <laughs> here I am just sewing the sign binding onto I don't know if it's called seam binding or bias tape but I just call it seam binding so I'm sewing on um, the other side of the leg so here you guys can see a closer shots of how I sew it um, that's all you have to do for the leg and once you finish doing um, this you have to um, fold everything under to the wrong side and that will create the channel so I struggle a little bit on this um, line to meet them up under the crotch because they were off a little bit when I um, you see here I'm placing them inside the wrong side now to create the channel here and they're not really lining up so I have to like finesse with it a little bit um, it took me a little bit longer to get this done because like I'm trying to make it perfect and line it perfectly where it meets at the bottom of the crotch so yeah that's how you um, create the channel of the leg so you can put the elastic through it so for the rest of this video you guys would just see me finishing sewing this and creating the channel for the leg back to my surgery because I forgot to surge the edge of my belt loop so the bill is pretty tiny all you have to do here is just surge two side of the um, the longer edge that's all you have to do here just surge them and then I'll show you guys how to um, prepare it and sew it to the back of your um, bloomer
here you have to um, to prepare the belt you have to fold the two serge edge to meet each other that's about like a quarter inch on each side to fold them and then also fold like a quarter inch on the top and the bottom and then you just place it on the center line at the back of the bloomer as you can see here and I tried to match um, it on top of the stitch edge at the top of the bottom and then just sew like an eight inch and and that's what secured the built loop to the back of the bloomer that's all you have to do for the build loop. And then here is the build or the sash or tie, whatever you guys want to call it. I already um, ironed it. So here you guys just see me sewing in it all the way around. I just leave about like a two inch gap in the center of the sash. So just sew the, um, both of the side and then leave it open at center because you need to turn this sash inside out. Used to turn the sash inside out is this um, tool right here. I think this tool is purposely used for turning things inside out. I can't remember the name of it, but I will link this tool in the description if you guys want to get this tool. It just make it easier because it's a super long sash and I do not want to use finger or anything to pull it through. So you guys see how I use it here? I just stuck the purple part inside and then just use the wooden dowel that I came with to uh, push it through it and just pull it out. You guys will see me do it here. It's easy. <music> inside out um, I used the wooden dowel to just try to poke the edge because there's the two pointy edge at the end of each die I just try to poke it to make it um, come out and that's all you have to do for the sash and then the next clip will be seeing me um, ironing it making it look flat So you guys see here, um, I'm just trying to straighten the bottom and just use my iron to iron this sash down because when we turn inside out, it's really uh, wrinkly and I need all the sides to be flat because I'm going to top stitch the whole thing all the way around so it'll stay flat and it won't be like bubbly or wrinkly. So this is what I'm just doing, just ironing everything, making everything flat and nice so I can top stitch it and you guys will see that in a little bit. <music> thing you need to do is cut all your elastic to the size according to the pattern that you guys have and just insert it through the channel that we have sewn. 
the waist and the two leg opening so that's what i'm doing here and you guys can just um see me do it um it's really self-explanatory you guys just use a safety pin and just insert it through the channel and then go into your sewing machine that has zigzag because you need a zigzag stitch to zigzag the elastic um together and i overlap it about like one inch or probably not an inch it looked like it's like three eight or a half inch and you don't want to overlap it too much so just overlap probably like no more than an inch and that's it you guys and then the last clip i'm just showing you guys how to tie the bow and then i'll have photo for you guys at the end of this video so enjoy you guys and i hope that this video helped you guys out and go make something pretty you guys take care and like and subscribe if you like my content and would like to see more because i'm planning to do more sewing tutorial this month um i know some people wanted to see two 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 so i will show you guys how to do two two and how to make a fluffy um there's a little trick to it and i will discuss that when i do like a tutorial story so i'm going to do like a lot of bloomer series i have like two more bloomer and a different style than this one and we're going to be focusing on bloomer then i can move on to maybe next month i'll move on to like tutu and if you guys want to learn um how to do tutu then stay tuned and like and subscribe to my channel it will really help me out and that's all i have to say you guys so you guys take care have a good day you guys Bye.